Right, the next thing we're going to look at is a figure walking upstairs. And all I've drawn is the steps. Because I'm going to go straight in with paint this time. I'm not going to draw any triangles. I'm going to do some dark blue legs. And I'm going to bring one arm down here and one arm up there like that. I've just added a couple more steps so you can actually see them sort of halfway up the steps rather than at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Right, now I'm just going to drop one leg and stop it there as if that was a forward leg. The rearmost leg I'm actually going to take down to the next step. You can see now why I've drawn an extra step in because I didn't draw enough to start with. But you can see how easy that is. There's the, uh, the figure walking away from us. And you can see I've not even bothered with a neck this time because you don't really need it. You can leave white space and very often that'll tell you, oh yeah, that's a neck or it could be a white collar or anything. Now you can see that just by creating one leg a little bit longer than the other and then putting the lines in for the steps and then adding to the effect by bringing the shadow down the steps like that, very, very simple. But it's still based on this elongated triangle and the circle for the head nothing's changed and of course we can do exactly the same we could have a, a figure walking towards us let's uh, let's have this guy Ooh, there's a bright lemon uh, shirt and he's walking towards us again you can see how certain colors automatically demand that if you use them it's got to be part of the focal point point. and this time I'm just going to paint like this fella going up the steps I'm just going to paint one leg now this technique means that the two legs, one of them is actually only raised as it's going up the steps. You can see one is only raised very slightly. This one here, the guy will have as walking in a quite an animated fashion. Put a shadow on the ground this way. We'll say the sun's coming from the left this time over here. Now we can have him looking over here, but I think this time we'll turn his head this way. And you see how easy that is to do that. He's looking over to the left this time just by putting the hairline where I've put it. Right now using the same principles as these two figures where we've had one leg shorter than the other let's see what uh, we can achieve using the same ideas. I suppose this could be an iron bar and I suppose this could be a strong man he's lifted his knee up and he's about to bend the bar over his knee so there's something you could use in a bit of industry. What I actually had in mind was to draw something like this. In that case, we'd have a set of pedals there, coming down like that, through the center of the bike, down like that, and under that foot there. If we then pull out the shadow of the one wheel, and then importantly the shadow of the other wheel like that, the important part of the shadow there is the two separate shadows for the wheels. Right, I'm just going to wipe out that. That taking that black line out then reads that the hands are actually over the handlebars rather than underneath them, so that's fine. It's almost like they've got a pair of gloves on. Just a little touch like that, and it could almost be a French beret, couldn't it? I mean, the only thing that's missing now is the uh, string of onions over the uh, Frenchman's shoulders there. But you can see there is absolutely no need to put any facial details in this figure at all, indeed, in any of the figures. None of them look the less for not having any facial details. Right, finally, just while I've got a little bit of space left on the paper here, we hinted before at changing the direction of the triangle and it gives us a little bit of animation just by the triangle almost falling over. Well here, let's have a look at this by actually bending the triangle in this way, like that, and having one slightly overlapping like that. You can see already we've got two triangles in love. Isn't that nice? And we'll have a lady and we'll have a, her arm out here, like that. But we'll put a long coat and bring it down to perhaps about there. She's walking along with her arm round her husband like that. And to add a little bit of extra interest, 
we'll put a little dog down here. Now look how easy it is to paint a dog. Really all we're do doing is an elongated question mark if you like or possibly a figure nine. What we'll do is just put a little hint of the other or the front part of the body. Maybe it's a maybe it's a sort of a little spaniel or something with with uh, floppy ears. Right now you can see from this it doesn't have the dog doesn't have to be any specific breed. It's just starting off with that sort of question mark or that number nine almost, and then just adding a few little blobs. So it's a sort of a three quarter view, just a hint of the uh, lead. She's far more interested in talking to her husband and. Uh, discussing no doubt plans that she's had in mind for improving a house that he's about to get to know of six months later as you do right now let's give him a nice bright orange jacket and his arm is sort of coming around like that so that her hand is sort of disappearing around his waist very simple it's all suggestion all nothing too specific but very very simple We'll put a little bit of shadow underneath that arm there and obviously this arm is going to be in shadow and this side of her coat is going to be in shadow as well. In fact I'm putting in some of the colour that we've used for the trousers in as the shadow area here and that helps to knit these two figures together even more. Perhaps take a slight light area out there for the light that's falling on his trousers from the left hand side. Right, so there we are. He's just looking towards his wife, having heard the wonderful news that he's about to be decorating the kitchen. And this is an ideal scenario that you can put into many sort of landscape pictures. The lady doesn't have to have a coat on, she could have trousers or a skirt like this. So even if you never venture beyond this page on this watercolour pad, you can see that with this 10 figures you can mix and match them in all sorts of different groupings and poses and obviously in colours and you'll have dozens and dozens of figures that you could use just to put in here and there to help populate your landscape without going any further. So there we are, you don't have to worry about drawing the perfectly proportioned man and woman. Isn't it much easier when you're just drawing or painting starting with a triangle and a circle for the head.